What's up everybody, Chris here from Project Option and in this video we're going to talk about intrinsic and extrinsic value. So every option out there has two price components, one is intrinsic value and the other is extrinsic value. In today's guide we're going to break down each of those for you, how they relate to calls and puts and how you can make sense of them. Alright, so an option's two price components. So if you look at an option's price, it may have intrinsic value, it might not, but every option price will consist of the intrinsic value plus the extrinsic value. So in this graph here, we're just looking at the price of an option through time, and we're looking at the option's price, intrinsic value, and extrinsic value. So as we can see here, the intrinsic value plus extrinsic value equals the total option price. So what is intrinsic value? Well, one way to conceptualize intrinsic value is the value of being able to buy or sell shares at the option's strike price as opposed to the current market price of the shares. Additionally, an options price will only consist of intrinsic value at expiration. So another way to look at intrinsic value is if the stock price remained at its current price through this options expiration, what would that option be worth? So just looking at an example with calls, let's say the current stock price is $200. If we have a call with a strike price of $150, the intrinsic value of that call is $50 because the value of buying shares at $150 as opposed to $200 is worth $50. With a call with a strike price of $175, you're buying shares $25 below the current stock price. So the value of that call option should be at least $25. Now if the strike price of the call is $210, there's really no value of buying shares at $210 when you could just buy them for $200 in the open market. So the intrinsic value of a call with a strike price above the current stock price is zero. So what is extrinsic value? Well, extrinsic value is the portion of an options price that exceeds its intrinsic value. Another way to conceptualize extrinsic value is the premium associated with the potential for an option to become more valuable before it expires. For this reason, extrinsic value is sometimes referred to as time value. So let's go ahead and take a look at the table below to see how intrinsic and extrinsic value are applied to options. So let's say the stock price is $200 and we're looking at a call with a strike price of $150. We know that the intrinsic value of this call is $50, but if the call's price is $52, that additional $2 is extrinsic value. If we look at the $175 call, the intrinsic value is $25. If that call's price is $30, that additional $5 is extrinsic value. Lastly, if we look at the 210 call, we know that the call has no intrinsic value, but it's still worth $2. That means all of the options price is extrinsic value. So with the stock price of $200, while the 210 call really has no benefit right now, there's still potential for the stock price to increase to $220, in which case the 210 call would have $10 of intrinsic value. So that, that $2 premium in the out-of-the-money call with no intrinsic value represents the potential for that option to become more valuable before it expires. And that's why extrinsic value is sometimes called time value. So just to recap, a call's intrinsic value represents the value of being able to buy shares at the call's strike price as opposed to the current stock price. Now, you may have picked up on this already, but we're going to walk through how to calculate intrinsic value for calls. So when the stock price is above the call's strike price, the call's intrinsic value is equal to the stock price minus the call's strike price. So for example, if we have a 140 call on a $150 stock, there's $10 of intrinsic value on that 140 call because 150 minus 140 equals 10. If the stock price is below the call's strike price, the call's intrinsic value will be zero. So for example, if we have a 225 call on a $200 stock, the 225 call has zero dollars of intrinsic value, which means any value that that 225 call has is extrinsic value. So now that you know how intrinsic and extrinsic value apply to call options, let's look at a couple of visual examples so you can see how intrinsic and extrinsic value change through time. So in this example, we're looking at a call with a strike price of $105. So whenever the stock is trading above 105, the 105 call has intrinsic value. When the stock is equal to or below 105, the call has no intrinsic value and therefore any value it has is extrinsic. 
Also, as expiration approaches, extrinsic value diminishes, leaving only intrinsic value left. So that's why intrinsic value is sometimes used as a gauge for you know, what an option will be worth if the stock price remained at its current price. So for example, if we look at this option in stock between 73 and 51 days to expiration, we can see the stock price is trading below 105, in which case the call option has no intrinsic value and its price consists of all extrinsic value. However, with around 46 days to expiration, we can see that the stock price rises to 115, which means the 105 call has $10 of intrinsic value, which we can see on the lower graph. Now, even when the option has $10 of intrinsic value, we can still see that the option's price is $12, which means it has $2 of extrinsic value. Lastly, we can see that as expiration approaches, this call's extrinsic value diminishes, leaving only intrinsic value at expiration. So at expiration, the stock price is around 111, which means the 105 call has $6 of intrinsic value. Now if you look at the lower half of the graph, we can see that at expiration, the options price is right around $6 and it has no extrinsic value. All right, in this example, we're gonna look at the intrinsic and extrinsic value of a call option that's primarily out of the money. So right here, we're looking at the 195 call versus the stock price. So when the stock price is above 195, the 195 call has intrinsic value. However, when the stock price is equal to or less than 195, the call has no intrinsic value and therefore is all extrinsic. So in this example, we can see that after the first few days into this trade, the call option is out of the money the entire time, which means all of its value is extrinsic. As expiration approaches, the option's extrinsic value decreases and eventually the call option expires worth zero dollars. Now as I said before, extrinsic value represents the potential for an option to become more valuable before it expires. So it makes sense that extrinsic value decreases as time passes because as we can see here, when the stock price is below 195, extrinsic value decreases because as the option's expiration gets closer, there's a lower probability that the stock price will increase above 195 and therefore the option expires worthless at expiration because the stock price is below 195 and the 195 call has no intrinsic value. Alright, now let's talk about intrinsic value for put options. So a put's intrinsic value represents the value of being able to sell shares at the put's strike price as opposed to the current stock price. Now if the stock price is below the put strike price, the put's intrinsic value will be equal to the put strike price minus the stock price. So for example, if we have a 165 put on a $150 stock, the 165 put will have $15 of intrinsic value. This is because there's a $15 value of being able to sell shares at 165 as opposed to $150. Now if the stock price is above the put strike price, the put's intrinsic value will be zero because there's no value in being able to sell shares at a lower price as opposed to the higher current market price of the shares. So for example, if we have a 300 put on a $325 stock, the 300 put has $0 of intrinsic value because there's no value of selling shares at $300 when you can sell them for $325 in the open market. So just like we did for call options, we're going to walk through two examples to show you how the intrinsic and extrinsic value of a put option change through time. So in this example, we're looking at a put with a strike price of 190. So when the stock price is greater than or equal to $190, the put price has no intrinsic value and is therefore all extrinsic. When the stock price is below 190, the put has intrinsic value. Just like call options, a put option's extrinsic value will diminish as expiration approaches. At expiration, a put option will only consist of intrinsic value. So in this example, between 35 and 18 days to expiration, the stock price is above the put strike price of 190, which means the put had no intrinsic value and its, its entire $10 value was extrinsic value. However, between 18 and zero days to expiration, the stock price fell from nearly $200 down to almost $140, in which case the 190 put had $50 of intrinsic value at one point. Now this example is a perfect demonstration of why options are valuable even when they don't have intrinsic value. So in this case, between 35 and 18 days to expiration, 
the put option with a strike price of 190 didn't really have any real value because you could just sell shares at the current stock price as opposed to using the option. However, that value that the put option had before it had intrinsic value represented the potential for that option to become more valuable before it expired, which is exactly what happened in this case. Now at expiration, we can see that the stock price was right around $170, which means the put with a strike price of $190 had $20 of intrinsic value. And as we can see, at expiration, the 190 put was worth right around $20, which represents all of the options intrinsic value. Now in this last example, we're going to look at the intrinsic and extrinsic value of a put that is out of the money the entire time. So in this example, we're looking at a put with a strike price of $80. So when the stock price is greater than or equal to $80, the put is all extrinsic value. When the stock price is below $80, the put has intrinsic value. Now in this particular case, the put never had any intrinsic value because the stock price was above the put strike price of $80 the entire time. Now as we can see, the put's extrinsic value decreased as expiration approached because the option never had any intrinsic value. At expiration, the stock price was trading around $100, which is $20 above the put strike price of $80. So this particular put option expired worthless at expiration because it had no intrinsic value. While the option never had any intrinsic value, we can see that the extrinsic value fluctuated for this put pretty significantly. So as we can see here, in the beginning of the period, the 80 put was worth $2 and the stock price was around 110. However, the stock price did fall and almost breached $80. And as we can see, as the stock price was getting closer and closer to the put strike price, the put's price was increasing, which means its extrinsic value was increasing. Now the increase in extrinsic value can be explained by the fact that as the stock price got closer and closer to the put strike price, there was a higher and higher probability that that option expired with intrinsic value. All right, now that you know the basics of intrinsic and extrinsic value and you've seen examples of how they apply to puts and calls, let's talk about what determines the amount of extrinsic value in an option. As you saw before, we can easily calculate the intrinsic value of a call or put option fairly quickly. However, extrinsic value is much less straightforward. There are two primary factors that contribute to the amount of extrinsic value an option has. The first one is the amount of time until that option expires. So longer term options are going to be more expensive because there's more time for the stock price to make larger and larger movements and therefore more time for those options to become more valuable. So if you look at this visual, we're just comparing the at the money call extrinsic value versus the number of days to expiration. So remember that an at the money call will, it will consist of only extrinsic value because at the money options have no intrinsic value. So let's look at the relationship between days to expiration and the amount of extrinsic value in an at the money call. So as we can see, the call option with one day to expiration has 24 cents of extrinsic value, whereas this number increases up to $5.85 in the 108 day at the money call option. This makes sense because in 108 days, there's a lot more uncertainty with the amount that a stock price can move. And therefore, people are going to be willing to pay more for protection via call options or put options. And therefore, the options will be more expensive, which means they'll have more extrinsic value. Now, in one day, there's a much lower likelihood that the stock price makes a wild move in either direction, which explains why short-term options have less extrinsic value. So the second factor that contributes to the amount of extrinsic value an option has is the level of implied volatility. So if you don't know what implied volatility is yet, implied volatility is what the option markets are implying about a stock's future price movements based on those option prices. So if a stock's option prices are more expensive than another similarly priced stock, the, the stock with higher option prices has higher implied volatility because those higher option prices are implying larger movements in the stock price in the future. So in the visual below, we're just looking at the extrinsic value of an at the money call in three implied volatility scenarios. In the first scenario, the call has $1.71 of extrinsic value, and the implied volatility in that scenario is 
However, in the third scenario, the at the money call has $5.71 of extrinsic value. In that case, implied volatility is 50%. Also, note that in each of these three scenarios, the stock price is at the same level and all of these options have the same amount of time to expiration. So just changing the options premium and keeping the stock price and time to expiration the same, option prices that are higher will lead to higher levels of implied volatility and also have more extrinsic value. All right, well that pretty much wraps up the main concepts you need to know about intrinsic and extrinsic value. So let's just go ahead and recap what you've learned in this video. So the first thing is that every option has two price components, intrinsic value and extrinsic value. So for calls, the intrinsic value will be the stock price minus the call strike price, unless the stock price is below the call strike price, in which case the call will have no intrinsic value. Intrinsic value for puts is the put strike price minus the stock price. However, intrinsic for a put will be $0 if the put strike price is below the current stock price. Next, as expiration approaches, extrinsic value of an option will decrease and only intrinsic value will remain at expiration. And lastly, the options with the most extrinsic value are the options with more time to expiration and higher levels of implied volatility. Well, that wraps up this video on intrinsic and extrinsic value. I hope everyone learned something new and I hope that you feel like you've mastered intrinsic and extrinsic value at this point. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel as you'll get video alerts when we release new topics. And also give us a follow on Twitter because we do publish new content there as well as we release it.